Hi everyone, welcome back to this series of Amy Broker tutorials and videos. Hey, thank you so much for joining me. It is really, really cool to have you checking this out today. And this one is a really, really great one because it actually builds on one of the videos that we did over the last couple of weeks. And that is when we are scaling in to positions. Um, for example, sometimes you might not want to buy all of your position at once. You might want to buy a little bit here, a little bit there, and a little bit further on down the track, or even keep buying all the way up into the trend. There are so many different ways to trade, and with a tiny little bit of Amy Broker Formula Language, or AFL, we can actually test almost all of these different scenarios to our heart's content, which is so great. So last week, what we were looking at was buying every month, so a dollar cost averaging scenario. Every month, we, we might buy just a set amount of shares, a really, really simple scenario. This one, what I want to do is actually buy if our price is above a moving average. So continue to buy. In other words, if it closes above, that would be our first one. If it closes above again, then we'll buy some more. If it closes above again, we'll buy some more. And what we'll do is we'll limit it to three times. So because of all of these different things, it will be a tiny little bit more complex, but I guarantee once you get this, it will be really, really great. And just like me, you'll want to check it out in your own back testing and even trading. Now at the end of the video as well, I'm going to show you a little trick with the position sizing. What that means is, with pyramiding traditionally, um, the way I was taught at least, is that you might buy uh, your position at first, but when you buy your second position, you actually halve your first posi position. Because technically, um, and obviously we don't, we can't see the future, but if we're buying into, into the momentum, um, then eventually it's actually going to turn around at some point. And so we just want to keep our risk lower. So every time we buy a new position, um, we would be halving our position. So I'm going to show you a little trick in how to actually do that as well. What we first do is just go to analysis, formula editor, and the first thing I'm going to do is just to set up our, our moving average. I'll just call it MA1, just to keep it really, really simple. And we've been through moving averages about a hundred times before, so I'm not going to go into it in any great detail. But what I'm setting up here is just a moving average of the closing price of the last 100 days. So nothing too fancy. And what I'm going to do next is just set up our buy signals and our sell signals. Now I'm setting these up as a raise. These aren't our actual, these aren't to be confused with buy or sell, which turns bold and Amy Broker recognizes it. What I'm doing is actually just setting up a normal array. And what I want is for these arrays, so the buy signal to be a closing price above our MA1 that we just set up here previously. And likewise, a sell signal, I would like it to be a closing price below that moving average that we just set up previously. Now we close that off with a, a semicolon just so that, that, um, so that that's okay. Now from here, we could actually go straight into our scaling in if we really wanted to. If you remember from last week, we, um, we used our if then else, which is IIF, and it turns blue, so Amy Broker recognizes it, it lets us open up our bracket, and then it tells us what it wants. So what we're looking for is very simply the buy signal that we just set up. Now what happens when that buy signal happens? We want sig scale. In. And so that will actually scale into, you know, it will continuously buy as long as our price is above that moving average. And if it's not above that moving average, we just want it to return zero or no signal. Now, likewise for the sell signal, we could just set up a uh, just the sell signal that we coded previously. And if we set our, our maximum open positions to 20 and just set our position sizing, we have looked at that previously. Um, I won't go into that now, but basically if we've got 20 positions and we're buying a thousand shares every time, just as an example, we could actually use that as is. Um, now, the trouble with that is it, was, it would actually buy up to our 20 positions um, and maybe we don't want that. So what happens if we actually want to limit the amount of times that it scales in to that position? This is where we need to just a tiny bit more of Amy Broker formula language. And what I'm going to do is, um, is create a new array and I'm just going to call it X. It's uh, you know something very, very simple, really nothing fancy at all. And 
Here's the thing. I've just upgraded to Ami Broker 6.1, I think. I absolutely love it. There is a whole bunch of stuff in this new version, and, um, and I think the work that they are doing there is absolutely fantastic. Uh, I strongly recommend that you check it out. But the reason I mention that is because it actually has, um, has brought in a new piece of code called some sense. Now, don't worry, I'll show you how to do this in earlier versions as well, but some sense is really, really cool because it simplifies a lot of things. We've got some sense our, our condition. So what's the condition we're looking for? That is since the last cell signal. So since the last cell signal, I want to um, add up all of the buy signals which is the array that we just set up previously. So because of that, it will actually add all of the buy signals together, um, you know, after there's been a sell signal. And now we can actually count how many times we, we will have entered above that moving average and we can stop it whenever we want to. Now, if you are using a previous version of Ami Broker, um, like I was up until very, very recently, we just have to separate it into two little parts and that's sum, so the sum of by signal, which is uh, which is what we set up previously, and then the range. So the range, what we're looking for is bars since, oh, bars since, and that turns blue. That lets us open up our bracket. Amy Broker recognizes it, and the bars since our cell signal that we set up as well. So if we just close that off and close that off with another bracket as well, I'll quickly check that. Okay, that works. So that will also add together those buy signals after that sell signal. Now, how do we actually count those? Again, we'll just create a quick array and we'll call it um, X signals or X sigs. And again, you could call it anything that you wanted here. What I'm going to say is we want X to be less than or equal to three. So that means any time up until three signals, it will actually keep scaling in. So as long as X is, un is less than three, this will actually be true. So this will actually give us a signal. Then it's just a matter of adding that to our buy condition here. So we've got if buy signal, so if it's closing above moving average one. However, if it's closing above moving average one um, and it's less than three signals, which is our X sigs, that we just set up here previously. Now we're buying only up to three signals and then it will actually stop. How cool is that? Now let me show you what that looks like. I'll just close that down and just go to our automatic analysis. If we just use this on the current symbol just to keep it really, really simple, current symbol um, over the last 20 years, for example, the settings, we just have to make sure um, that we've got them correct. And for the sake of this particular test, what I'm going to do is use the closing price of the current bar. Now, this is important, and I'll tell you why in a second, um, but this is the other really important part. We need to set report to detailed log so that it actually shows our scale in. Now, if I click back test, it will give us all of the different entries um, uh, or signals that it actually takes. Now, the reason we set it to detailed trade list was because of this. It has our first signal as a buy, and it buys a thousand shares. Then it has our second signal, which is actually a scale-in position. Now, remember how I was telling you that, um, that we can set it to actually halve the position um, to the previous one. So instead of a thousand shares, it's now 500 shares. Um, in fact, I have it just 500 shares from there on in. So it scales in once, and it scales in again, so a total of three times, and then no more positions. Um, or, you know, it just holds onto that current position until it sells. How awesome is that? And you can actually see all of that information in detail using that detailed trade log. Now, I did promise that I would show you how I halved that position size every time, and it's quite easy to do. If you remember how we set up our X is less than or equal to three, so if we've got three or fewer signals, um, then X sigs um, is true. Now, what we can also do is if it's our first trade. So if it's our first trade, we want our, um, that would sort of be X equal to or less than one. 
So it's counting those signals and we just want the, the first one or up to the first one. Now here's the beauty of this part. It's, uh, it's in our set position size and I'll just type it along as well as we go. Um, set position size. So we've set up this array called first trade and it's um, just for that first signal using that X that we set up previously. Now set position size, that turns blue and we can open up our our bracket. Now it asks for the size and then the method. Now what we're going to use is the method of, um, of just buying shares. We could also use the the value, so a dollar value. In fact, let's do that. Let's use dollar value because um, that'll make a bit more sense for us here. Now it's still looking for the size and we want that size to be variable. So it looks like we're going to have to use an if then else function again. Now I apologize if this is a tiny bit more complex than what we're used to, but watch it a few times and you'll get used to it. And I do have other videos on if then else as well. So we've got our first trade, which is that array that we set up. So if it is um, on the first trade, we want it to, let's call it a thousand dollars. Previously, I set it up as a thousand shares, and you can change this um, to be, you know, a percentage, uh, the amount of shares, or the amount, or the amount of dollars SPS value. So there's a few different ways to do it. Um, they are all on the Ami Broker website, which is absolutely fantastic and very easy to get into. Um, so we've got a thousand dollars, or if it's not on its first trade then we could set it up as $500 instead. And that is how we got our, our differing, so we've got our $1,000 there as you can see on the first trade, and then 500 on the subsequent trades after that. Guys, I hope this has helped you in some small way. Uh, please stop by the website, it's asxmarketwatch.com. It'd be absolutely fantastic to have you there. Um, have got a lot of great people also giving suggestions and recommendations. Um, really, really cool bunch of people. I'm you know, very blessed to have them around the site and around the YouTube channel. I hope you have a great week ahead and happy trending until we meet again. Bye for now.